video we're going to talk all about top stitching. So what is top stitching? Basically it's just stitching that shows on the top or the right side or the outside of your clothing. Now of course you can sew your top stitching in a thread that matches the colour of your fabric and that will make it quite subtle. You'll only really see it if you're up close. Or you can make a gorgeous feature of your top stitching by sewing it in a contrast colour top stitch weight thread. And you can also sew two rows rather than one. Creating a neat effect with top stitch thread is one of those techniques that can cause sewers frustration, but it is totally doable once you know a few tips and tricks. So I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips for tip top top stitching. And try saying that after a couple of martinis. My first tip is one that I just can't emphasise enough and it's to always sew a test swatch on the fabric that you're using for your project. Top stitching can turn out totally differently depending on your fabric, your needle, the stitch length. So a test swatch gives you the chance to adjust your stitch settings before tackling your lovely garment. It's definitely worth the extra effort. Make sure your test swatch mimics the area that you're going to be sewing on your garment. So whether that's one or two layers of fabric, Add a layer of interfacing if it has it, such as on the collar or on the button stand. Tip number two is to try out top stitch thread. So you can get special top stitch weight thread, which is thicker than regular thread. And it looks really good on medium and heavier weight fabrics with a bit of body like denim or chambray. It will create a nice bold stitching line. It can look a little bit thick and bulky on lighter weight and drapey fabrics, so always do a test swatch first and use a regular thread on those if you prefer. So when you sew with top stitch thread, you're only going to use this as your spool, so in the top of your sewing machine, and then just use your regular matching colour thread as your bobbin. So for this reason, always sew top stitch thread with the right side of the project face up so it shows on the outside of your garment. My third tip is to change your needle. So if you're using top stitch thread, try using a top stitch needle or an embroidery needle. And these have a bigger eye, so they're easier to thread and they'll create neater stitches. Sometimes I can get away with using a regular needle, but it's always safer to try a top stitch needle if you have one. You can also try a twin needle. And these are basically two needles stuck together so they'll sew two rows of stitches at an even distance from each other. And of course for that you'll need two spools of thread and two spool holders on the top of your machine. Personally I don't love twin needles, they're a little bit temperamental and it is yet another thing to buy so you definitely don't have to have one. Whichever needle you're using, always use a nice new sharp needle for your top stitching because a blunt one can cause skipped stitches which are really annoying. Number four is to stabilise lightweight and drapey fabrics. It's generally easier to get a neat result top stitching medium and heavier fabrics with body such as denim and chambray because they can handle the thicker thread and because they hold nice and steady as you're sewing them. If you're using something light and drapey like this viscose or a cotton lawn, what you could do is give it a good spritz with the spray starch first to stabilise it. So hang it up and always test it on a little patch before you commit to spraying your whole thing and just to check that it comes out and doesn't stain your fabric. Or you can use a strip of tissue paper to stabilise the slippery fabric as you're sewing it. So maybe you've got some leftover tissue from an old sewing pattern. So just cut a strip, place it under the fabric that you're about to sew and that will just help stabilise it as it's going through the machine. And then all you do is you just tear it away afterwards. And just take out any little bits left over. Tip number five is adjust the thread tension. You will probably need to adjust your tension dial to balance the thicker top stitching thread with the finer bobbin thread. So take your time to find the right tension dial setting on your test swatch. On this test swatch, I started off with the tension too high at a number six. And what that's done is it's meant that the top stitch thread has pulled the pink bobbin thread to the surface. So you can see these little pink blobs. 
On the other hand, when the tension was too low at a number one, the top stitch thread is too loose. So it looks fine on the surface, but on the underside, you can see that it, these little yellow blobs where it's peeking through on the wrong side. So when it's balanced, you shouldn't see the bobbin thread on the surface or the top stitch thread on the underside. On this sample, the balanced top stitching was a number three on the tension dial, but always test it on your fabric because it will vary. Number six, lengthen your stitches. When you're using a thicker top stitch thread, lengthen your stitches to three or 3.5 millimeters and this will give you a straighter stitching line. It will be less wibbly and generally look more lovely. To keep the stitch length looking even all the way through your seam, make sure you're sewing at an even speed without pushing or pulling the fabric through. Number seven is to keep the width even. So take your time to sew at an even distance away from the seam line. Make sure that you've pressed the seam allowances away from the seam so you don't get any random fabric ridges and as you're sewing you can hold the fabric away from the seam line. You can use a ridge on your presser foot as a guide for edge stitching close to the seam. Then when you're sewing your second wider row of top stitching, you can line up the first row of stitching with the edge of your presser foot and use that as a guide. On some machines you can shift the needle to one side and then sew with the seam line lined up with a central guide on your presser foot. Or you could try an edge stitch foot and this has a little central guide which you line up with the seam line. So you just pop it on and line up that central guide with your seam line and then again shift your needle to the side and start sewing. Number eight, beware the thread clumps. Because top stitch thread is so thick, it can look a bit messy when it's back tacked and it's got a tendency to get tangled up. So just don't worry about back tacking if you're sewing a seam that's gonna be crossed with another one like this one is. It's very unlikely to unravel in between. When you start, just hold the thread ends out of the back so they don't get knotted up. If you're top stitching an area that won't be crossed with another line of stitching, such as the rosa pocket, leave some loose thread at each end, then give the bobbin thread a tug from the wrong side to pull out a loop of top stitch thread. You can then pull this out with a pin and tie the threads in a double knot by hand. Tip number nine is try not to unpick your stitches. Now I know this is easier said than done, but if you unpick your stitches and then go over your stitching line, you're gonna get lumpy bumps where you've overlapped the threads. So sew with care and check you're happy with how the garment fits you before you start top stitching. If you do need to unpick, the quickest way is to rip out the bobbin thread on the wrong side and then pull out the top stitch thread in one go. It's a lot easier than trying to get the tiny little bits of thick thread out of the stitching holes. And finally, top top stitching tip number 10, finish by giving your top stitching a good steamy press. The iron will work wonders to set the stitches into the fabric and to neaten up your seams. So those are my top 10 tips for tip top top stitching. So go forth and garnish your seams. <laughs>